check out this crazy machine. It's crazy. It's taking bits of wire and crushing them up and stacking them. Well, that's it. News today is we're going to Christchurch to hopefully find some go-karts, eat some pizza, go to some kind of appointment for Jack. I don't even know what that is. We're in the loser cruiser because the old D-Max is in the shop. Yes, back in the shop. It's just getting a bit of work done on it in the shop. Blummer neck, more roadworks. Look at these guys, everyone's working hard. <laughs> Except for that guy and that guy and that guy. <laughs> and the other guys. Oh, they're, they're also standing and talking. <laughs> and this guy's driving his Ranger. Mate, I'll tell you what, if I was the boss on these roadwork sites, I'd crack the whip. Supercars. These fellas pulled up in a low rider uterus, so I can tell their boy races. It's going to be a bit of stiff competition on the track today. Uh, I'll get get the team to introduce themselves. How's it going? Andrew Mert. Troy, how's it going? Luke Mert. And Mikey, how's it going? Yeah, this is the owner, this is Nick. He's just bought the business. This isn't the paid promotion, by the way. I just bowled up with a video camera. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to give us a briefing. Oh, come on through, Jack. We, we've got to be, step into the pits to get the briefing, and then these boys are going to have a hoon around, and then me and Jack will give her a nudge. Who's going to win the race, lads? Definitely mate. Definitely mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm picking the quiet one in the corner. <laughs> cool, calm and collected. We'll see. This is a classic health and safety moment right here. When I was a kid, they'd give you the keys and say, there you go, don't kill yourselves. And now, we got to go through an hour and a half of safety briefings. I better stop filming and listen now so no one gets killed. So what that actually means? Pretty competitive racing out there today. A couple of cutoffs. I don't know if they're legal. I guess it's all legal in racing. But uh, we've got the time here. And I think my suspicions were confirmed about the winner. We'll see. So we've got a scoreboard here, which is really good. We'll be able to, we'll be able to see who the winner is and who is the loser. In fourth place was cut four. So well done. Yeah, I think that was me. Yeah. Oh, lucky <laughs> last. And then you got in third place, we got Cart 13. So, like Bronze, nice. with the yeah. new engine. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, second place, we got Cart 15. Yeah, I've got Joe's champion. Yeah. <laughs> and today's winner oh, oh, the winner is Cart number 11. There he goes. Mike, you call it right there, hey, eh, Jerry, bro? <laughs> it Look at that. Yeah. That was awesome. That was really good to watch. It was probably just as much fun watching as it was racing. I'm sure these boys are hanging out to see the video footage. Racing. Those are my racing shoes. They wouldn't let me wear my jandals. Can I have that one, yeah, I really can have that. And it's got a magnet on the end as well. Shot. Cheers, Nick. Do you want to eat as well? Oh, yeah, I'll grab a pen, eh? Can never have too many pens. There you go. So, if you followers want a really awesome time and you live in Christchurch, come down to Buchan Street, isn't it? 91 Beacon Street, it's easy to find, it runs parallel with Columbo, it's just over Moorhouse Ave, just south of Moorhouse Ave, bowl in here and uh, bring your mates and your followers can have a race and it's got the timing and everything, it's 
No, awesome. These carts are actually quite fast. I was quite surprised how fast they went. Good fun. Mate, I can remember when I was a kid, we always, always used to go down to Fantasyland in Hastings and uh, ride the go-karts. We used to sit and watch actually and figure out which carts were the fast ones and then we'd choose those. But here Dad, they're all kind of the same speed. Dad, in three, three more years Charlie can come. Now, I think we're going to go get pizza. We're going to go pick up a log burner because our one's a bit buggered. Almost burnt the house down. <laughs> and then back to the coast. Oh, we're going to go camping tonight too. Somewhere. Light a fire. Give Jack some guidance. Check this out. Amazing. Yep. That's about right. The loser cruiser. Where'd you get Look what the cat dragged in, eh? Samuel Harrison. Are we following you, bro? He's just in the Land Cruiser. Prado. We're in the Loser Cruiser. <laughs> Not Prado. Honda. Why isn't it working? Actually, this Honda's pretty quiet. Like my Honda boat engine, it's whisper quiet. I keep starting it when it's already running. I've only done that twice in my boat, but I've done that twice in this today because I'm not used to driving it. Now I'm used to driving my boat and I don't try to start it when it's running anymore because I know when it's running. Well, what was your favorite part about riding the go-karts? Uh, when I wasn't paying attention and nearly hitting the edge. <laughs> so I had to swerve a bit. I nearly hit the barrier. Hi. I'm driving around the city in Christchurch trying to give everyone the one finger wave and it's actually quite blimmin' dangerous because I'm too busy trying to make eye contact with other drivers instead of paying attention to what I'm doing. So, a new rule I just made up on the spot, yes, no more one finger waving in the city because not only is it a liability, <laughs> you don't get any waves back anyway because no one's making eye contact with other drivers, everyone is paying attention to the road like they should be. Alright, that's it, I'm going to sign out now because I've just pulled into a car park. And we're about to catch up with Samuel Harrison, the infamous boyer. Dun, dun. Yep, you're doing it. that's about right. I kind of pick up a log burner from, from Caro's house that I bought on Trade Me. She's trying to give me a bloody toilet as well. Oh, is that, are you going to take it? And now it's clean. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't when I got it. It was disgusting. Hey, dog. Yeah, bark at the camera. There you go. Uh, I don't know if the fire is going to fit in the loser cruiser. We're going to survey said fire and see if it'll fit. Jack, do you want to grab the keys, bro, and unlock the back of the loser cruiser? I suspect she might be actually just calling us around to help her move houses. <laughs> a lot of stuff coming out of the shed. This is Caro. Hey, hi to the folks out there in TV land. There we go. It's under there somewhere. Yeah, this bit here. I reckon she's going to fit quite nicely. What do you reckon? Going to fit? Yes, me. Can we flip that down? We can, can't we? Look at the crap in Kristen's car. You pull up, we've got plastic, bits of wire, old electric fence post. We've got rocks in here. That's mine, that's mine, that's mine. Oh, that's your crap? My rock. There's blimmin' driftwood. There's a an old bullet shell. There's a blimmin' pram in here. There's money. Look at all that old money. There's three bullet shells. Get rid of the pram. Yeah, there's actually three bullet showers. Three empty yeah. bullet showers. Two seventies, are they? More driftwood, some lead. Oh, these are my lead sinkers. What are they doing in there? You guys going fishing? These blooming things. A box of brochures that was meant to be delivered last year. Ah, oh, now what's happening? No, no, it's meant to. I want to fold this down. Oh, yeah, it's meant to fold down. Wasn't that going? Oh, there's a rock in there. Flimming it in this. I'll just throw that shit over there and you throw it back in. There we go, look at that. That's looking more like it. Hey. Alright, now we're going to grab the blimmin' fireplace. Do you have any boards? We could just slide it along boards. Yeah, no, do you know that's really good? I don't think it'll slide on the bricks. No. It's making it look pretty awkward, Josh. It's a bad thing. It's humongous. It is. It's a good chance it's actually going to break the loser cruiser. Can we open this? 
Yeah, that's probably a good idea, actually. Now? <laughs> Just as well as a woman here. <laughs> to sort us guys but out. But I tell you what, I'm not the sharpest that gets on me. Sam's incredibly strong. He doesn't look strong. But he's... <laughs> I should show it. I'll, I'll, I'll put that training video on again of the, you guys do it with the ropes oh, and the counter and the thighs. And... Hang on it since I showed you that. Right, that's probably going to break. Yeah, that'll break. Before she <laughs> sold it to us. <laughs> oh, it, it's not rubbish, it's kindling. It comes with its own kindling. It's ready to, look, ready to go. They'll be making sinkers in it, it's full up with lead, that's why it's so heavy. Bloody hell. <coughs> they come with it, Josh. They oh, come. no, 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 that's the chimney fell down. It's free. Sorry, the chimney <laughs> fell down. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> we get some free landfill in there as well. That's probably why it's so heavy, it's full of bloody chimney, full of bricks. All right, yeah, I'll give this back to Jack. We'll get back on the job. Here, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, bloody bricks are falling out of the chimney now. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, it's a baby car seat in there. That was easy. Yeah. What did you pay for it? That was pretty funny. Me and Sam were just having a meeting in their driveway, planning our next mission, and we kind of looked the car on and said, oh, we're just talking in your driveway. Don't mind us. Toodle pip. She's gone to put her toilet away because we're not buying the toilet. We don't, we don't need another toilet. Sweet. Yeah. Alright, we're going to go hunting, bow hunting, because we keep talking about it and not doing not it. So. Local, no, no, chamois bow hunting. We're giving up on there, it's too hard. <laughs> Just had some exciting news. Poochie is a mum to ten bloody puppies. Yep, ten puppies. What ten. the hell are we going to do with ten puppies? <laughs> There's one silver, one silver one. Apparently, Kristen's fallen in love with a silver puppy. We might have to keep it. If anyone wants a puppy, they're probably going to be quite good hunting dogs. Drop me a line. I may have to knock a few of them on. I think they have hunt away. Dad thinks they have hunt away cross on them. Hunt away cross. They'll be good hunting dogs. Anyway, we're going to get pizza. And then I think, instead of going camping tonight, we're just going to drive back to the coast because Jack's pretty excited to see the puppies, aren't you, bro? And Mum. And Sonny and Charlie. Oh. I just want to go camping, but if Jack doesn't want to go camping, we will go home. We'll see. We'll touch base when we're driving out of town, let you know how we're doing, because it's quite late. It's about 4 o'clock, probably 4.20. Tired. Four hours to drive home to the coast. I don't know if I'll be able to drive home for four mm -hmm. hours, but we'll give it a nudge, see what happens. Get too tired, we'll pull over. Got the hard antler swags in the back, so we can always just biff them on the ground and go to sleep. Is my swag in here? Bloody how my swag's not in here, only Jack's is. Okay, we're gonna have to drive home because I don't have a sleeping bag. I forgot mm. to throw my swag in. Bugger. Another glorious day. Just on the side of the river at the moment. They started to go for a morning hunt. Been going for a few evening hunts lately and not bagging anything. Getting bagged out by my wife, but that's about it. So decided to go for a morning hunt instead of an evening hunt. And I just come up a clearing here. The wind was actually blowing kind of behind me and upstream, slightly upstream, so I was a bit 50-50 whether or not I was going to see anything. I was hoping that maybe there was some parts of the clearing where deer were feeding and the wind wasn't blowing to hold it. So I snuck up, snuck up through the grass, snuck over the hill, nothing in the first clearing. Snuck through the patch of bush into the second clearing, nothing in the second clearing. Snuck through into the third clearing, nothing in the third clearing. I'm just about to cross the river to go into the fourth clearing. 
walking through a patch of scrub when just in front of me, it's still pretty dark at this stage, it's about 20 minutes later actually, I waited for it to get light enough to film. And then just in front of me, two deer exploded out of the scrub and into the riverbed. So I just bang on up the spout, crash through the scrub, and they were legging it up along the side of the river and I managed to, uh, to get one on the ground right there and then the other one kept running and disappeared. I decided to leave him because I don't really want to carry two deer out. I'll be here all bloody day trying to get these things out. So a pretty good day, another spiker to go on the chiller with our big velvety. Not much deer sign on the clearings up here, but disappointing actually. This area does get a bit of a hiding though. That's why I came up here first light. So if you're having a bit of trouble hunting particular areas that get a bit of a hiding, bear in mind the deer probably won't come out until after dark if it gets a lot of hunting pressure and they'll go back undercover first thing in the morning. So I reckon these ones here had been feeding on the clearing across there and were just making their way upstream. And I just busted them as they're about to go through this patch of scrub here up onto the hill behind to bed down for the day. A couple of spikers, but I better get the guts out of this one anyway. He's been sitting there for a while while I've been having a drink and trying to listen to the birds. A couple of birds here, not many. This area has been 1080 twice. A bit disappointed, not much of a morning chorus today. Yeah, anyway, I better get to work. Oh, a few of you have asked me to do a video on gutting deer. Now, I have done a few of these vids already, I'm pretty sure. But I'm going to do one more really quick, really simple one. Uh, ingredients. One deer, one knife, and some guts. The gosh, shit, I've kind of cocked this up. I can't show you this now. I'll show you these. No, I can't show you this now, sorry. <laughs> because I've already got the guts on the ground. And that was the bit I wanted to show you to reach over the top of the guts with a knife. I kind of need someone filming it while I do it or I film it while someone else does it. So you're just going to have to wait till I shoot another deer. I've been shooting a few deer lately but it's been in the evening and you can't really film stuff in the evening and it's starting to rain now. So I'm just going to get this deer gutted and carry it out and then keep your father's eyes peeled for the gut. <laughs> I'm sorry it's not this one. Well, it was a hard decision this morning. I got up at 5 o'clock. It was white baiting or deer hunting. Actually, it was a pretty easy decision because <laughs> white bait haven't been doing much at all. So I'm glad I came deer hunting. I think that was the right decision. Now I'm going to go home and have a nice cup of tea. Sweet little bag. Furanaki, Stony Creek Furanaki. Definitely recommend this pack. It's awesome. It's, you can carry a water bladder in and all this, the stuff you need for a day's hunting. You can even bone a deer out and fit most of the deer in there. You can fit all the prime cuts anyway, back legs, back stakes and everything inside this pack with a water bladder. It's a really good pack. Quite strong, comfortable. It's the mutt's nuts. She's a great life. As my mate Dan the man would say, a great life. I normally cut these front legs off and put the belt uh, in between the, the shin muscles but because I want to save those for stew, I've put the belt through the bottom of the front leg which might not be a good idea because I've got this hoof kicking me in the head all the way back. But we'll see. I might get halfway down and cut this bit off and just put it through the other bit but someone gave me a really good recipe where you make a really good stew by cutting the shin meat into rounds, bone and all. It sounds really delicious. Anyway, I'm going to put this camera back in my Stony Creek bag and uh, stumble my way back to the truck. Ten metres later, <laughs> no, I'm joking, it's at least 15, maybe 20. Oh, I'm halfway there, halfway home, halfway to the truck anyway. I usually wouldn't carry a big deer out like this, I'd just take the hindquarters and the back stakes and maybe hang the front legs off my shoulders and leave the rib cage there. But the thought of nice chilled meat, the luxury of having a chiller to use is just too good an offer to pass up. So I'm just going to persevere and get the whole animal out. I've got a real sore shoulder muscles. I'm a bit unfit for lifting deer. I can feel its back bones, its rib bones breaking under me. I pinged it right through the chest as it was trotting along there. Oh, my old pin legs can't do it. Oh, I need to start mountain biking or lunging or something. Get my quads a bit stronger. Blim the neck. Right. Let's lean forward and see how this is going to work. Oh, there we go. I'm going to do it up a bit actually. It's sitting a bit low. Tighten it up just a wee bit. 
Oh, that's much better. A bit more comfy, a bit tighter. I'm not pressing on my bony shoulders as much. I'm trying not to blow a gasket walking on these slippery rocks. I'm getting more buggeder and more buggeder. I'm almost there, it's the downhill push. I keep telling myself this has got to be good for me, but I don't think it's good for my shoulders because the belt's digging in and the spike is a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. But still, <laughs> I don't mind a bit of pain for some good old venison steaks. I'm looking forward to trying that venison stew out. Oh, I'm not sure if I told you, but I cut his bloody hocks off. I didn't make it very far, I made it about 20 metres down the river and I decided to cut his hocks off because it was just kicking me in the head and the deer was too low on my bum. Now it's in the small of my back, it's a bit easier to carry. Whew! All right, last push. Drink a mountain water. Dare on the ute. Home for a cup of tea. Oh, no worries, mate. No worries. I could carry the sucker for 10K if I had to. Probably carry it all day. Easy peasy. It's all mental, guys. It's all mental. It is so important, and I can't stress this enough, to never give up. Always tell yourself you can do it. And never, ever say I'm getting too old for this shit, guys. I think that's why a lot of people go downhill in their old age, because they say I'm too old for this shit. Oh, I'm getting old, my knees are giving way. Oh, I'm getting old. Oh, I'm so unfit, my bloody lungs, because I've been smoking, all of that crap. Just keep charging. And... Don't worry about it, she'll be right. I stay fit, eat healthy, but really important to just keep charging me. I'm gonna to live to 100, that's my goal. Unless something clicks me on the way, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I reckon I'm gonna have a 100th birthday party and I'm gonna get up there and, uh, 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 and I'll keel over and cark it and everyone can party at my funeral. That's the plan anyway, so you fellas are all invited. I'll make it to 100, come to the most awesomest birthday party funeral ever. Back at the uterus, check it out. Bidding on a Datsun on trade me. Check out these guns. <laughs>